Now I get to remove water while I sleep. And that's the hustle behind my muscle. I forget how fortunate I am to have invested in one of these reverse osmosis systems. I talk a lot about it. I talk about how it saves me time. It saves me energy and not having to feed the fire as long. Um, hours of, of boiling, pretty minimal. So let me show you what I have here and how I go about this. Excuse the mess, but it's, it's either everything is tight or you have lots of hoses. So right here is my sap that we just collected. And that sap is right around 2.4%. Um, so right now, the sap that is in this barrel, I have a brass spigot on the bottom. And what that does for me is it, it will pull the sap out the bottom of the barrel. Let me see if I can back up a little bit. So it will pull the sap out the bottom of the barrel, but also all the sap that's in the barrel will aid to that pressure. It goes through the hose work here and it comes into my pump. And right here is my hose. This is an Aquatech 8800. That sap will then circle around and it goes into a regular standard house filter, uh, 10 inch 5 micron house filter. Then it comes out of that and I have it in parallel um, through these one, two, three reverse osmosis membranes. And why, why do I run it in parallel? Um, I find it doesn't get clogged as quickly. Um, if, if one of them gets clogged, it doesn't hurt the rest of the system. Um, I think that to be in, in series, they, they all have to be working well or, or, or series doesn't work quite as well. Um, series will get you further in one pass, but what I do is I use what's called a, the batch system. So I will do one barrel for about eight hours and then I do my next barrel for about eight hours and so parallel seems to work best for me. I've gone both ways. Uh, each his own, right? Each his own. If I had larger barrels, then, then the series would work better, but I don't. And then the sap comes out of that final. It joins back together. It goes through. I have a little valve here that will add pressure and then you can see that that sap will just recirculate back in. So, what I'm going to do is I will kind of show you guys that I do not keep it there, but I'm going to start to add the pressure, the back pressure onto the system. As I add the back pressure on, you see the slow rate of the sap returning. Will lessen. And it takes a little bit of fine adjustment, not too much. Get that adjusted. And once we lower that rate down, I don't know that you'll be able to see this on this camera, but there you go. That's the water that's coming out. I'm gonna tip it here towards the light. There we go. So that doesn't seem like a real strong dribble, but that's water that I would have to evaporate. That's water that I would have to uh, remove. 
and you can already see the very bottom of that barrel how it's adding up and uh, well god gee that's unimpressive Joe now really what it is is I'm gonna put this hose I've got a little hole here I'm gonna put it in there I'm gonna put the put it in there clamp it down I'm gonna put the lids on both of these and I'll come back out at like 5 in the morning and you'll see what happens um, and so now I get to remove water while I sleep and that's the hustle behind my muscle so right back at you guys good morning it is bright and early the next morning I ran the RO for right around nine hours so I've got to switch this out and head on to work here in a little bit so it's it's wee hours of the morning but it's been about nine hours of run time and let's see what that barrel looks like now and so you can see that is my sap barrel a little foamy but that would settle right out it's just got a little splash coming in from the sap still dribbling in and this is my let me turn my headlamp on here you can see that that is my RO water is definitely dribbling. It is pulling less water out. It's dribbling, but it's still it's still very much concentrating still. Let's run some RO counts on this. Remember, this is about 2.4. I don't know if you can see that. But you can see that that number is off the charts. We're, we're in excess of 8.6. We're in excess of 8.6% sugar. So once again, once you do the math and you, you do the figuring and 86 divided by your sugar percentage is your gallons of sap to finish gallons of syrup. So, you know, if I'm at 8.6, 86 divided by 8.6, well, that's easy math right there. That's a 10 to one ratio. Um, so 10 gallons to one gallon finished syrup. Um, inside that barrel, it's a 30 gallon barrel. You know, there might be might be seven gallons in there, eight gallons at the most. Um, I'll take it. So that's the RO in a nutshell. Now I have to do what we call a rinse cycle. And I'll kind of show you how that rinse cycle works. So when I'm doing my rinse cycle, I have to pull my intake tube off the bottom spigot. Two-handed is always easier than one hand. I will put that into my RO water. Then I come back over here. And you can see that I have this nice little timer, so I could just I could either have it run or I get to choose two hours, four hours, eight hours. Um, I'd already turned off the pressure, so I don't have any pressure. It's just spewing back in. But right now it's spewing in. It's it's pushing out RO water instead of sap. And so what I have to do is I have to allow it to go till that perfect point where it's water's in the system. I have to allow it to run until water's in the system and not just sap. I don't know a good way of testing. Maybe someone could test with the RO. Maybe you just take a lick of it. 
I don't really know. I usually just kind of count in my head. I'm not counting right now. So let's let's take a look. So right now I've got this doing my rinse. That water is coming in pretty fast into this barrel. It's getting pulled out of this big RO barrel and it's just siphoned through the system, rinsing off the insides of these membranes. What you will find is when it gets good and clean, the RO water discharge will start dripping. There are some things in this process that are super exciting. This isn't super exciting. This is just a, a maintenance piece. Um, I will run this and clean this, and then I will store the system away into the basement until I get an opportunity to actually do the end of season cleaning. Um, but I gotta get it clean first, so this is it. So hey, the last piece of the rent cycle is I will pull my, my intake tube out and I will place my intake tube into my, my pail and I will just let it sit there and cycle. Sometimes I let it cycle for uh, 20 minutes or so. Uh, usually my routine is I get out here real early in the morning. Um, I fill that bucket up and I let it rinse. Coffee's on the percolator. Skillet's getting warmed up. Fire's coming up in the house. So it's, it's a dance, but I can do that. I can let it cycle for about 20 minutes. As I'm leaving, I just pull up to the barn, turn it all off, or I hook it up to the next barrel and get that started. As I go on my merry way to work, that barrel is working. So that's the, that's the RO process here at, at YB Family Farm. So um, hope that's helpful. I had, I had a few questions there, but I hope that's been helpful.